In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove and install a timing belt on a 4.2 liter SHO. To get started, you're going to need to depressurize the fuel system and remove the fuel line. You're going to need to remove the starboard side intake manifold and then the complete wire harness. If you've never done this before, take some pictures of the connectors and where the harness is attached to the motor. When you're undoing these small clips, be careful not to break them as you will need them to reattach the harness once we're all done. Once you're certain all the connectors are disconnected on the harness, go ahead and lift it up as one solid piece. Make sure you don't catch anything and set it on a workbench. Next, go ahead and loosen the belt guides on the exhaust camshafts and then remove the valve covers. The valve covers need to be removed so you can actually put a wrench directly on the camshafts in case we need to reposition them slightly to get the timing marks to line up when we're reinstalling our new belt. We're now going to rotate the engine around a top dead center cylinder number one. The dowel on the flywheel needs to line up in between the starboard camshafts. Once it's there, double check the timing marks on the camshaft to make sure they line up as indicated. If they don't, rotate the flywheel 360 degrees back to top dead center and double check the marks again. Go ahead and remove the flywheel, the lighting coil, the pickup coil, and its base. When you're removing the base, make sure you don't lose the two dowel pins that actually located onto the block. If you need to rotate the engine, do it before you remove the timing belt. Once the belt's been removed, we can neither rotate the crankshaft nor the camshafts, otherwise engine damage will occur. Loosen the belt guard on the crankshaft. which allows to just move it out of the way. If you're going to reuse the belt, get a paint pen and make new marks on the crankshaft that align with small triangle and at each camshaft so that we can use those to retime it. If you're going to use a new belt, those marks are already made for you. Go ahead and compress the tensioner using a torque wrench. Don't apply more than 11 foot-pounds of force while you're doing this, otherwise you will damage or break the tensioner. Once it's compressed, use a 5 millimeter pin to lock the tensioner in place. You can now remove the center idler pulley and remove the belt. When using a new belt, make sure that the part number is facing up and the dotted marks align with the mark on the crankshaft. Once that's lined up, you can use the belt guard to hold it in place. Then route the belt around the idler pulley and the intake camshaft. Make sure that the timing marks line up on the camshaft with the mark on the belt. Then do the exhaust. If you need to adjust the camshaft slightly with the wrench, you can do so. Hold tension in the center of the belt, then wrap the belt around the tensioner and around the other intake pulley. Once again, making sure that its mark lines up correctly. Then onto the exhaust making sure that its mark lines up correctly. Hold tension in the center of the belt and use a wrench to slightly take out the slack in each one of the camshafts. You can then install the center idler pulley and snug it down. Verify that your timing marks are correct. Once again, using a torque wrench and not applying more than 11 foot-pounds of force, compress the tensioner and remove the pin. We're going to temporarily install the flywheel. and we're going to rotate the engine two full revolutions back to top dead center number one and just verify that our timing marks are still correct. 
Once you've spun the engine around two full revolutions and you have it back at top dead center number one, verify that the timing marks on your camshafts are still correct. If they're not, you'll need to remove the timing belt and do it again. The marks on the belt will no longer line up with the timing marks on the camshafts themselves and can be disregarded at this point. Remove the flywheel and adjust the belt guide clearance to one half to one and one half millimeters worth of clearance. Torque the idler pulley to 28 foot-pounds. Reinstall the pickup coil in its base. Reinstall the lighting coil, making sure that the tab goes into the cutout in the base. Reinstall the flywheel. Be sure and use new bolts and torque them to 29 foot-pounds and then another 90 degrees. Before reinstalling the valve covers, place a small amount of 3-bond 1280B in the corner of each upper cam cap. Install the belt guides and adjust them to one half to one and one half millimeters worth of clearance. Reinstall the wiring harness, making sure to properly route the wires. You may need to refer to the service manual for specifics. Once you have the motor completely assembled, hook it up to YDIS and a flush kit and start the motor and allow it to run. Check all your engine sensors and make sure that everything is functioning normally. Thanks for watching.